Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Gabrielle and I'm a software engineer at TradeGecko Singapore. No, we don't do trading, we don't sell lizards. We are a SaaS company doing inventory management. And I wasn't planning to mention this, but since Elisha mentioned it in her Tech Ladies talk yesterday, I postponed university to work full-time as a software engineer because I realized I, work, I learned better doing things hands-on. So you... Oh. <laughs> I wish my parents were clapping as well. <laughs> so you can say that I'm community thought because everything I've learned is from reading docs, reading blog posts, watching talks, attending meetups and conferences like this. <laughs> yeah. So I also want to thank the people at Trade Gecko because they were the ones who helped me grow from a really scared 18 year old who didn't know what I was doing into a stronger and less scared software engineer. They didn't dumb anything down, but they let me take ownership of every, in everything, like building features, doing massive migrations, performance tuning, and basically just challenged me to grow. So quick plug, we are, looking, we are growing our team, so find me if you're interested. Okay. So before getting into programming, I did competitive track and field. And for four years, I did this event where I sprint 400 meters and jump over 10 hurdles. And then I became smarter and found an event where I run 15 meters and jump <laughs> one bar. So when I started programming, I wondered, is there a training plan that I can follow to get better? I realized that there are principles of athletics training that can help me become a better programmer and I'd like to share four of them with you. So the first is cross training. For high jump, I thought majority of the training would be easy, just jump over the bar like 10 hours a week. But in fact, only 10% of the time was spent high jumping and the rest were on weightlifting for strength, hurdles to contort my back into strange positions and sprints to increase speed. So it turns out I had to build the supporting skills to become better at my main skill of jumping over the bar. So what's a programmer's main skill? This varies for everyone, but usually it's more than technical abilities. No point if I build a super complex fast app that no one wants to use or knows how to use because it doesn't solve their problem. Or if I build it, but it can't scale to handle thousands of users. So we programmers do so much more than just writing clean code. We also need supporting skills like requirement gathering, UX and design principles, DevOps, and interpersonal skills. I love the point by Akira yesterday that the code is to communicate. And think about all the times you've struggled to name a function or name a class, or how to write your PR comment um, nicely so that you don't offend the author. Why do we do that? It's because communicating well in those areas helps us, helps save us from misunderstandings and time fighting fires. So cross-training all these skills helps us to become stronger overall. However, when we're training so many skills, there's the danger of losing focus, which brings me to principle two. You can't improve what you don't measure. For training, I had a notebook where I wrote down what I did that day, the timings and heights I jumped, and how I felt. So because I wrote it down, over time, I can see improvements, both quantitative, like the increase in height that I jump, or qualitative, like I no longer feel like I'm dying when I finish a hard training. So I wanted to track my progress as a programmer, and I also had a programming notebook. I wrote down what feature or bug fix I worked on, what I learned, how I broke down the problem, and whether I missed any considerations or use cases. Over time, I can see improvements, like last time I had to draw mind maps to map out the function calls, and now I can visualize it in my head. I know this is JavaScript, but you get the point. <laughs> I'm also thinking about more considerations like usability, scalability, and performance when deciding one solution over another. So the third principle is progressive training and recovery. If I keep lifting the same weights week after week, Will I get stronger? No, I'm not going to. Progressive training means increasing the difficulty of the exercise and so that it's always slightly challenging. But do your muscles get stronger during exercise? They actually get weaker because the increased stress causes muscle tears and you feel these as muscle aches after you finish your hard workout. Instead, muscles get stronger during recovery when they heal from the tears and 
become stronger than they were before. So with recovery, this cycle of getting weaker then stronger repeats, and overall, we become stronger. On the flip side, with insufficient recovery, our bodies cannot heal and will deteriorate in performance. So recovery is just as important as training for the training to be effective. So there are three levels to recover from. As, as athletes, the recovery from training means time away from training to rest. And for us programmers, this we should also recover from technology, which we use all the time. How many times do you all use, do you all check your phone a day? Guesses? 10? I see 10. So the average person checks it 85 times a day, and it's twice more than they think they do. So we spend, we spend so much time subconsciously using technology, and then struggle to find time to do, uh, do for our other priorities. So maybe the way for us to be masters and not slaves of tech is to disconnect. The second recovery is from competition season. So athletes commonly take an off-season break after their major competition to freshen up mentally and physically. This seems counterintuitive, like why would you take a break just when you've reached your peak performance? This is to avoid plateauing or hitting a limit to their improvement. A break allows them to come back better, fresher, to create a higher trajectory and hit a new peak. Similarly, for us, to, after intense periods, there's physical and mental limits to what we can take. The way to increase that limit is to take a break and come back with fresh perspectives and increase our capacity to handle more. The third recovery is from injuries or when shit happens. So once when I was injured, I wanted to be tough and continue training, but I got scolded by my coach because I was doing more harm and it was my responsibility to do everything I could to recover and get better, even if it meant not training. So in our tech culture though, when someone asks, how's it going? The default answer is, good, <laughs> okay, good, <laughs> for me. Compounded with our Asian culture, we're not very good at acknowledging when we're not good and, when, and taking the steps to recover. Then we see articles like this and this. Last year, I had two friends commit suicide, and the year before, I had another friend commit suicide. And I wish it didn't take such a tragedy for me to start caring. And I also hope that you don't ever have to go through such a tragedy to start taking action. The responsibility is on us individuals in this community to look out for one another, to know the signs, and seek help for ourselves and others. The fourth principle, draft with others. So in long distance races, runners run behind each other to save energy from fighting air resistance. This is called drafting. And so a race strategy might be for members to take turns being the front runner so that the rest can conserve energy and last a long race. So the whole pack runs faster together than if they each ran alone. This reminds me of our rails community, where there's such a strong culture of building one another up whether it's contributing to open source libraries, answering on Stack Overflow, writing blog posts, and organizing meetups. When we help one another get better, which improves our ecosystem and helps ourselves get better. For those at the front of the pack, that's all you creators, maintainers, and mentors of the community. Thank you for breaking the winds for us. And no, not gantut, not fat. I mean breaking through the status quo to build this community to introduce new ideas and fight resistance that comes with anything new. Thank you, uh, yeah, thank you for blazing new trails for us and thank you on behalf of everyone. <laughs> then for those of us who are riding on the winds of others, let's not forget who's helped us to get to where we are. And as more people join us, it's our privilege to lead and teach them. If we embody the culture of learning and sharing well, we can trust that it will help us one way or another, whether it's directly from the people that we helped, or indirectly, like the industry having cool breakthroughs, like having self-flying wheelchairs transport us around the world when we are old and wrinkly. So wrapping up, what are you training? What supporting skills can you train? How are you training? How can you measure your progress? And are you having enough recovery to make your training effective? Lastly, 
Who are you training with? Who's helped you to get to where you are? And who can you help to get better? I'm just a young developer that's very grateful for this community who's welcomed and taught me so much. And I hope we'll all play our part to continue building this community. If you have any questions, just find me later or ping me on Twitter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gabriel. That was amazing.